to let in more money, there is some form of negative belief or story that you have about money that you have to let go of. So you have to let go to then let in. I wanted to make this video because I recently made a video that was on the habits that I use to become a millionaire. And I was a little bit hesitant to put out that video to be honest with you, only because it kind of looks egotistical. It implies, oh, I'm this. And to be honest as well, just making so many videos on YouTube, I know that you know the intention is to relate with everybody listening to this. And if I'm like, you know, making videos about, oh, I'm a millionaire, then what that does is, I don't know, I guess I feel like, I don't wanna separate myself from other people and be not so relatable, but also I wanna show you guys how you guys can do it too. Because for me to become that, and honestly, some people are kind of surprised sometimes if they hear that I am a millionaire, just because they still don't understand how YouTube works. So like, oh, so you make YouTube videos? Like, how do you make your money? Do you just get paid on AdSense? Is it just AdSense and stuff like that? And it's much more than that. But for me to become a millionaire, it took me about a year, year and a half. You know what's funny? Not funny, just, I don't know why we say that, but when I was uh, like 19 to 20 to maybe 22, I always knew that by 30 years old, I would be a millionaire. I just always knew that. And at 28 years old, I had no freaking idea how I was gonna do that. I was getting paid $60,000 a year-ish. It was a commission job selling women's shoes. And there was no like end site that was near that I was for, like, gonna be a millionaire. But then what happened is I changed these five beliefs that I'm telling you, and I started to really be this new version of myself, and very quickly my life changed. Now, I think that the moment I became a millionaire, now, being a millionaire is just kind of a status symbol. You know, I don't put that in my Instagram bio or anything like that, but it's, it's something that you also, when you become a millionaire, it's kind of like, oh, I, I guess I am type thing. It's like, oh, I guess I do have $500,000 in stocks. I, do, I guess I do have a $100,000 Tesla that's paid off. I guess I do have this, 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 that adds up to over a million dollars in assets or you know, realizing you have investments and stuff that add up to it. But it's not like there's something, it's like, you know, it was the same thing when I got 100,000 on YouTube. It was like, I woke up one day and I had 100,000. The night before, I, it was like 97,000. Grew by 3,000 overnight because I have a video that was on letting go of like something to raise your vibration instantly. It went mega viral. And all of a sudden I woke up at 100,000 and that was a goal for a long time. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Went to the gym that day, everything was the same. It wasn't like the YouTube gods descended from the sky and gave me this amazing YouTube plaque. And I was like, thank you. Finally, I got it. I'm finally worthy. Yes. And from there, everything was amazing. It wasn't like that. And the funny thing is then once you get to 100K, you're like, what about 250K? What about 500K? What about a million? And I'll tell you, and then getting the million subscriber plaque, it was the same thing. These things are kind of like just status symbols, but realizing and not putting so much of these things on a pedestal really does help. To be a millionaire isn't a huge feat. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not trying to make people feel small and be like, being a millionaire is nothing. But at the same time, um, it's not, you know, once you're a millionaire, you don't really see it as, oh my God, this is how I am. Like if I had my spending habits that I had back in 2015 now, and I had all this money, I'd be, I'd be pretty stupid with it. I'd buy stupid stuff. It would, uh, like I'd, I'd lose it quickly because I would sabotage it. But it's about realizing there is no moment when you've made it. Once you make a million, you'll then be looking at, you want to know what your problems are when you start making a million dollars a year? It's how can I like write off a lot of my stuff so that I'm not paying 400 to $500,000 of tax. And once you make a million dollars, you got to pay 40% of that to tax. So, and then you start building a company, then you got even more expenses. Um, then you, you buy a house and then you want to sell the house. But if you sell the house, you're going to have to pay 40% to capital gains, which means you got, you got to pay tax for everything. These are, these are millionaire problems, I guess you could say, but I'm just trying to kind of show you that you're, it's, it's never really like you've made it. Cause now that I make, uh, I mean, now that I make like more than a million dollars a year, it's like, now the goal, there's, it, just, it just keeps amping the goal and there's bigger systems I wanna build, bigger businesses I wanna build so that I can like influence more people. So it's like a resource. But anyways, one of the number one things and beliefs that I had to change to become a millionaire is I had to let go of a belief that I got in 2012. 
this belief was I started to study that of how reality works, conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I realized, oh my God, money's not backed by gold. How will I ever survive? Just knowing this little idea. So what happened is I developed a belief that said that money, money equals bad. Money is bad. There's like fire all around me. Money is not good. It is bad. If I want to be spiritually awake, I cannot also at the same time have money. Because if I had money, I would be a naughty, naughty bad boy. That's what I believed. So what did I do? I was living with my mom and my brother and my sister in this house in the middle of nowhere in Sloan, Nevada, which is right next, it's close to Vegas, but I said, you know what? This job I had, this low vibrational job that gets in the way of my Sunday meditations to elevating human consciousness, it gets in the way of my meditations of helping the consciousness ascend. So I went into work one day and I said, guess what? I quit. I didn't even put in my two weeks. So even if I wanted to go back there, I couldn't because I put in my two weeks, I burned the bridge. So what did I do? I went to my mom's house and I mooched pretty much. And I was like, money's bad. We're going to ascend into a higher level of consciousness eventually. I don't want to be a part of this negative system and 3D reality. So I'm just going to meditate. I'm going to sun gaze. I got really tan. I grew up my hair. I got really skinny because I went vegan like that and uh, was just like eating foods that, yeah, I just lost a lot of weight. And it was like this reality where money equals bad. Then eventually, about a year later, I was like, I got to get a job. <laughs> I gotta get a job. I was super resistant to get a job, but I went to this like lady that did this kinesiology muscle testing stuff and she was super accurate about a lot of stuff. I was like, does spirit want me to get a job? And she was like, yes. She's like 80 years old. She's like, yes, I'm getting a strong yes. I'm like, uh, can you do it again? Does spirit want me to get a job because of something that I could ask it in like 80 different ways? And then eventually I was like, okay, Aaron, you gotta get a freaking job. So then I was like, ah, oh, no. And then I went, I applied at Barney's New York, which is like a higher end, you know, woman's shoes, same industry I was in before. I got the job like that. Like, okay, maybe I meant to have this job. But what I had to do is I had to really reframe, even years later when I got on YouTube, that spirituality and money are able to be in the same boat. Think about this. You want to think money is bad. Money is bad. People sometimes, maybe you're listening to this and you're like a, a person with gifts and like you can just be a spiritual coach or something like that. And I know because I've also talked to a lot of people that are spiritual coaches and help them, you know, go full time. And the biggest block they have is like charging for their services because it's also a self-worth thing. I'm not worthy. We'll talk about, I don't want to spill the beans, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But it's like, think about this. Money is bad. Money is bad. Money is a meaningless idea. It is something that we as society give meaning. And what we do is money is an exchange of value. Everyone type that down. If this is alive, I'd be like, type it in. Money equals exchange of value. Instead, can you comment below money equals sign exchange of value? Just to let know that it's sinking because that's what money is. Money is energy. And the more good you put out, the more good you get back. And if you could solve people's problems and find systems of adding value, I do that by making 2000 YouTube videos, free videos that I put out. There's some people that want to buy courses, become a part of my challenges and stuff like that. And it's because I've put that good out to then, for them to find me to then come back. And the belief I had to let go of that money is bad and I should not charge for my thought about that. And one of the other reasons is think about this. You've got horrible, horrible companies that put not, okay, maybe that's my own belief system. I'm wearing red. I could be representing Coca-Cola right now. Okay. So Coca-Cola, Everyone loves Coca-Cola, right? It's the classic polar bear. Like it's been around like Santa Claus drinks Coca-Cola. All these celebrities drink Coca-Cola. Michael Jackson drink Coca-Cola. Don't you want to drink Coca-Cola? But not just that. Let's put sugar toxins and let's put corn syrup toxins in it and let's give it out and, and, and sell it and get everyone to buy it because we put emotional advertising in it. and then you just say, I want Coke. I want Coca-Cola. So how was you buy Coca-Cola? But guess what? Corn syrup and sugar can very much cause disease and cancer. So here it is, and most people would not argue and say, well, of course, you buy a Coke, you pay $2 for the Coke, you exchange, for the, you exchange the Coca-Cola for the $2, duh, that's called business. But then people have these amazing spiritual gifts that could honestly, coaching someone could change someone's life. But they say, no, I'm not going to charge for my spiritual gifts. I'm going to put this in a separate category, but I will pay $2 for that Coca-Cola, please. You see what I mean? It makes no sense. 
You might have a gift that can add value to people, but money is not bad. Money is an exchange of value, and if you're putting value out into the world, that value will come back to you. Some people do that via donations and Patreon and stuff like that, but I find it to be more powerful when you're actually, uh, when you're actually giving away something or exchanging something of value for some you know, amount or something like that, because when people buy in, when people buy in, they, they tend to pay attention. When people pay, people pay attention. It's true. I'm sorry. I wish it weren't, but it is true. So money equals bad. Not true. I had to let that go for me to make money. You think I, if I was making millions of dollars right now and I thought that money was bad, I would be a very naughty boy. I'd be like, no, this is bad. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to ascend into the fifth dimension, drink kombucha and play with puppies all day long. I would be like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this. I'm, uh, dude, the Luciferian agenda and all this like conspiracy stuff. Okay, so even some of you that I know like conspiracy theories, okay? I get it. Money ain't backed by gold. I know. But guess what? If we remain in that, money is bad. You're not going to attract it. It's like, you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. Come to me. I actually need you to pay my bills, but you're bad. You're bad. It's like you're gaslighting in a narcissistic way this little meaningless thing called money, which is just an exchange of value. So instead of saying you're bad, you're bad, you're bad because I have spiritual beliefs and conspiracy beliefs that because you're not backed by gold, I get it. It ain't backed by gold. But still at the same time, you don't want to be gaslighting the very thing that you need or want to attract into your life so that you can have resources to create other things for yourself. Okay? So that's the first thing that you really want to let go of that I had to let go of in order for me to like get to this next level. Now, the second thing is abundance in general. For me to become abundant, I had to drop my belief that the only modality of abundance is money. So first off, money is not bad, but money is not the only form of abundance. I've had people give me things before. I got gifted when I first got on YouTube and I started to become abundant. I got called by this place, this life transformation place in Costa Rica that said, hey, Aaron, if you want to come here, you can come here for free. $5,000 trip normally that people would pay for. Luxury place. Come here for a week. All you got to do is make a couple YouTube videos talking about it. And I'm like new on you. I'm like just went full time with my passion and stuff on YouTube. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. That's a form of abundance. I went for a week with my best friend, Victor Odo. That's actually probably what helped make us best friends. We're best friends united. He's also a YouTuber. And guess what? From there, it was like, I, it was a new level of abundance. I have opportunities that come up. Now that I've created success, people give me shit. I've got companies to send me shit for free. I don't even got to do anything. I don't know. Sometimes they find my address or they get it from my assistant. And yes, I have an assistant. Does that make me less relatable now that I said that? I'm kind of afraid sometimes of sharing things like that because it's like, people aren't going to be able to relate to me anymore because I don't have the same problems I had five years ago. But that's another part of it. I get to buy my freaking time back. I stopped. It, that was another major epiphany, by the way. I was talking to this guy that like does my finances and stuff. And he's like a high level business dude. And he's like, Aaron, you no longer have money is not like the thing that you have to look at saving. So it's not like don't hire an assistant because I'll save money. You want time, time, time is more valuable than money. And when I realized that I got an assistant because now she know everything. She know everything for me. I'm moving into a new house next week. I know I'm bragging now and I know you're even more relatable, but I'm moving into a new house. You're going to see that in probably the YouTube videos. You will for sure. And uh, when I do, I had her take care of everything. Like literally everything's being moved from Sedona there and I don't got to do shit because, because abundance, right? That's a form of abundance. I have that ability to hire someone to do this stuff that she gets paid really well. So she gets paid really good to do that. And she's happy and I'm happy. Okay. But in general, Realize that money is not the only form. What if someone gives you something? I've had people offer me jobs when I'm in an abundant state and I was working at Nordstrom's and Women's Shoes. I've got sponsorship opportunities come in. You want to know another form of, of, of money that isn't also backed by gold, but I think might be legit one day? It's Bitcoin. I have Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Okay, it's not money. Some people would say, it's not money. I just want dollars. I just want dollars. What about Bitcoin? Okay. That's money. That's abundance. It's a form of abundance. You're going to, you're going to say you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. And then, and then Bitcoin or you're bad too. No, just realize it's all an exchange of energy. So, you know, it, it got to align with your belief systems. I'm not telling everyone to go buy Bitcoin. I'm not even a financial, you know, who am I? Just some guy, right? Some guy on YouTube that, uh, that just makes videos. So that's the second thing. Don't limit your level of abundance. By just saying, oh, I only focus on money, I focus on money, I focus on money, I focus on money. Because money is not the only form of abundance. 
Now let me see what I wrote down in my handy dandy notebook. Now here's the third thing that you have to realize, a negative belief you must let go of in order to make more money. You guys wanna know what it is? Money is hard to make. And I will agree with you. Money is extraordinarily hard to make. Now, before you get your, you spill your kombucha and you get all mad and like, Aaron, I thought you were going to tell me the opposite of that. Think about this. Making money is actually illegal. If you were to get counterfeit money and you were to make it, or you were to try to make money or steal a machine from the government to make money, you could go to jail. So I'm not here to let you or to tell you that that's something you want to do. That's not what you want to do. You don't want to make money. You will go to jail for making money. So money's not hard. Money is hard to make. It is hard to make and it is illegal to make. But money is much easier to acquire. Ah, human lang English language that you can kind of get crafty with, right? But our beliefs create our reality. So you're sitting there going, money's hard to make. Money's hard to make. And it's like, yeah, it is freaking hard to make. It's like very few people do it, right? If you've seen the movie Catch Me If You Can, he makes fake checks. But guess what? He like went to jail and stuff. He got in a lot of trouble. Tom Cruise was pulling Leonardo DiCaprio out of some like place where he was like throwing up and like almost gonna die. Well, then he tried getting away again, but it was like this horrible thing, but basically it's based on a true story. Now, what is my point of this? Is don't try to make money resonate with a version of you that is adding value into the world and that money will come, ba come back to you. I just focus for, at first on YouTube, just making valuable videos, adding value. How can I add value? Because what you put out is what you get back. So don't focus on making money. Don't even focus on the money. Focus on the passion. What do you love doing? How can you add value? These are things that will change your life if you focus on them. How can I add value? And as you start putting that good out into the world, it will start, come, start coming back to you. I used to even know when I worked my nine to five job, if I went in and I was focused on you getting, giving me your money so I can make my goal of selling $5,000 a day because I get paid this percent commission and 5,000 per, it was like this thing where I was like looking at people, I was like dollar signs. But then if I went in and I just had fun, if I went in and I was focused more on like adding value and increasing their emotional state and like just joking around, I would just focus on connecting with people. And guess what happened from that? I connect with people and then the abundance would come. They're like, okay. They're like, ha, 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 funny joke, Aaron, ha, 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 And then they're like, okay, I guess I'll buy the shoes because I'm in a positive state now, ha, 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 ha. And then we just, ha, 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 all the way to the register. And then I'd ring them up and I'd get, and I'd get the commission. I'm like, yeah, that was all easy. That's all fun. You see? So money is not, money is extremely hard to make, but it is illegal to make, and you don't want to make money. You want to acquire it. How do you acquire it? By putting good out into the world, putting value out into the world, and letting it come back. Okay? Now, also, in case you didn't know, there is that of a video on seven habits that made me a millionaire. You can see that below. Just wanted to let that know. Maybe watch that after this video. That video got way more energy and attention than I thought. So I'm happy that people resonate with it, but I kind of made this video inspired off that video. So that was the third thing, is that money is bad. Um, now here's the fourth thing that's also probably one of the most important. You get in life a reflection of what you believe you deserve. Do you believe you deserve money? Because if you say, I don't deserve it, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, then guess what? Money can't come into your life. It's like money is like, like imagine, I just watched this movie called shang Li or something like that, it's like some Marvel movie, and there's this little ant, this cute little animal with no face. It's like walking around, it's like super smart and intelligent. Imagine this little animal's walking around and it wants to come to you. But if you don't feel worthy of it, you're like, no, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. And it's like, all right, and it just turns around and goes away. So it's about realizing, your sense of worthiness. When you start to believe you're worthy, you will get more of that into your life. Now, an example of this is lottery winners. How many people win the lottery when maybe even 20, 30, 40, 100 million, or just a million dollars? And within two years, it's all gone. It's all gone. Why? Because they don't believe they deserve it. They didn't work for it, but many people believe they have to work for the money. But instead of you realize it's about adding value, it's a, I, I think it's a more beneficial system. I know some people that are manifesting, they're like, I just want a handout. I want someone to give me something. I'm sorry to tell you that if that's the mentality, it's gonna be very hard to become, like millionaires aren't people that got it handed out to them. And unless you're like, was that movie The Anchorman where the guy was in it and he was like, I started out with an investment of only $2 million and now, or no, $20 million and now I have $22 million or something like his dad gave him the money. So, but other than that, 
there's no handouts. It's like you are it and when you have the, like part of this is your self image too, which we'll talk about in a minute, but worthiness and the reason lottery winners win all that money and lose it all is because they don't believe they deserve it. And it's also not a part of their natural self image to have it. They're like, they don't, they don't know. They also don't have the skills and the ability to like manage it. So it's like a little kids getting a whole bunch of money and there's, I'm going to spend it on this. I'm going to spend it on Oreos. I'm going to spend it on 2000 Twinkies. I'm going to spend it on, ro on, on dirt bikes. And they're like, oh, I have to pay 40% tax. I don't have 40% of the 20 million because I spent 16 million and then they're screwed and they're bankrupt and they got to get rid of everything they bought. Happens very often because they don't believe they're worthy. So part of their self-conscious beliefs is that they did throw it out and even sabotage. When I started making money, I start, I remember thinking to myself, like, do I deserve this? Is it this easy for me to make this much money? One of the first game changers is I met somebody on YouTube that had way less subscribers than me, but was making 25 to 30 K a month. And I was over here making like three to 5,000 a month. And I'm like, what does he know that I don't? So I started learning internet marketing. And then I learned how to make courses and all this other stuff. That's where my life really changed because I was able to scale. But I had to ask myself, am I worthy of this? And then I realized, and I had to go down to my, my beliefs about my parents, my, my parents' beliefs about money. And I had to like, let this stuff go. And once I did that, it changed absolutely everything. So you are worthy of abundance. It's about getting to the core belief that says you're not worthy and questioning it and realizing that you are worthy. And if you haven't been through the 21 day raise your vibration challenge yet, we, a whole section of it is about money beliefs and letting go and looking at your sense of worthiness, your ability to not feel abandoned, your sense of trust, all these different things, but it's life changes. 21 days, uh, into a, a new higher vibrational you, you can join it by clicking the link below, join the high vibe challenge. If you haven't already, if you have joined it, comment below your experience in the high vibe challenge. I was at an event the other day uh, that wasn't my event. I was seeing a buddy of mine who does you know, public speaking for a living and I had about 100 people were there and about 10 to 15 people came up to talk to me because they recognized me from my videos, which I had no idea if people were going to recognize me at this conference. And um, three or four of them were like, I was in your Raise Your Vibration Challenge. I was in your Magnetic Love Challenge. And uh, it, it just, they kept, so I didn't realize how many, I mean, there's now been over 10,000 people that have been through these challenges. So. Uh, but it was really cool to see. And there was people around me that were like, I got to get part of your challenges. I've seen three people come up to you and say that they were in your challenge and it changed their life. So if you haven't done those yet, click the link below. But anyways, worthiness, how worthy are you? Now, the last thing I want to talk about and the last belief you want to do, and it's kind of like a belief, but it's kind of like a, it's more so just your self image. How do you view yourself? What is your identity? Now, the way that it works is our identity and our beliefs about who we are is at our core. Until we question this or become aware of this, this will drive most of our life. Our patterns and our habits and our behaviors are around that small circle. And we will naturally take action and feel emotions equal to our identity. So the thing you want to do is you want to become aware of your identity. How do you view yourself? And if you view yourself as making $60,000 a year, then you will sabotage yourself. If somebody offers you $80,000 a year, or you will lose that money or something to get yourself back to what feels comfortable and familiar. You have to expand your sense of self. And the way you do this is through doing things your old identity would have never done. I committed to making daily videos. I became a full-time YouTuber. I am now in the process of becoming a, somebody that's doing live events often. I'm going to be doing that, being that version of me and seeing myself already as that version of me. Your identity very powerfully controls many aspects of your life. So that's what I recommend you do. By the time somebody has become a millionaire or has attained that status, I guess you could say, in a way, it's not necessary that they see themselves as a millionaire. It's very important to take on that identity, but it's very important to let go of the old identity of being a nine to five job goer. When I was a nine to five job goer, my thoughts, my emotions, my actions were equal to going to a job where someone told me what to do. And I felt safe with that. It felt comfortable because I got a certain paycheck. I had to rewire myself and to start to see myself as someone that takes initiative. So if there's one piece of advice I can give you today is to take initiative and to start going after whatever your purpose is, whatever your passion is. Stop waiting. The blocks are always going to be there. There'll be blocks that say, I'm not, am I good enough? There'll be blocks to say, I care what people think. There'll be blocks of money blocks that are there. Those blocks are going to be there when 
regardless. So you might as well step into it and then let them dissolve as you go through it. I waited two years to get on YouTube because I was, I wanted, I thought I had to have all my blocks figured out. I had to be perfect at editing videos. I had to be perfect in front of the camera, but guess what? I waited, I waited, I waited. And I had to know just one more idea. I had to get some certification. No, you start right meow. When you start meow, you start the, the process of shifting your identity and that changes your life more than anything. I found something that is more powerful than the law of attraction. And this explains why a lot of the law of attraction may not work for people. People may have intentions, they may set affirmations, they may be doing things that reprogram their mind, but if they don't experience the results, many times this is the key. Now when it comes to this, think of the process that's more powerful. It's snowing right now in Sedona, by the way. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna film the video outside rather than inside. It's nice being here. There's uh, seasons in Sedona. There's no seasons in Vegas. It doesn't snow like this in Vegas. It did one time when I was younger, but, um, or a couple times, but that's it. <laughs> the law of subtraction. The law of subtraction is that the degree to which you can let go is the degree to which you will receive. Now, the challenge with a lot of people having and wanting to attract what they want is they think of what they want. They think of what they want and the challenge is that they haven't let go of something to then allow that thing in. Imagine this, imagine that you want new energetically, imagine that you want new clothes. I'm gonna go over to my, uh, my closet right now. Imagine you want new clothes and imagine that your closet is so stuffed full that you don't even have space for new clothes. So what happens is we're saying to ourselves, this is my closet right here, so let's say that it's completely full of stuff. Like it's not, it's like I have to imagine, but imagine that it's just stuffed of stuff, stuff everywhere. It looks like this everywhere you go and there's literally no room for anything new. Well, in a way, energetically, I don't even have the space for it. So what happens is I'm blocking those things from coming into my life because I'm not willing to let go of certain things that are here. So. When you think of this, the law of subtract, the law of subtract, the law of subtraction is that when you let go and especially like of clothes that no longer serve you that you're never going to wear again, then what you do is you allow space to come in to create something new. So think of it like this as well. If you want to create for yourself and go full time doing what you love. When I used to work that nine to five job selling women's shoes, it was challenging for me to let go of that because of the safety I got from making, um, from selling shoes, for selling shoes for so many years. I made 50, 60 K a year. I thought I was happy with that, but at the same, I wasn't really happy with that. I knew I was meant for more and I was comfortable though. I was, it was, I knew what was coming in every month and I felt safe with that because I like to make, you know, um, at least that amount. So, the challenge though is that I saw myself as a nine to five job goer. I was bought into that. And even though I knew I wanted to be on YouTube making videos, it was hard for me to actually make that jump because my cup was already full. I wasn't letting go of the prior self image. So that's why for this process, the law of subtraction is that when you let go of something, then you can allow something new to come in. Then you can receive. But the first thing is you must become aware of it and then let it go. Now, this doesn't mean that if you, uh, you don't want to go full time to when you love it, you have to quit your job right away and let that go. What it means though, is you have to let go. Dang. Yeah. A little bit ago. This is uh, pretty crazy, right? Wow. It's just, uh, it's getting more and more snowy. Um, but you, it's about, it's about becoming aware and letting go of the self image you have to then wire in a new self image. So it's all about the name of the game with the law of attraction. It's letting go and wiring in. Now I will tell you that when you let go of outcome, you allow way more magical things to come into your life. When I was originally getting on YouTube and I was obsessive about numbers, I was like trying to manifest a hundred thousand, then a million subscribers. And I was so focused on that. It took the passion out of what I was doing first off, because then I wasn't doing something because I enjoyed it. I was doing it because of the results. I was doing it for, it's like when people do things for money versus doing it because you're passionate. It's a very different energy. 
there's, it's rare that I'd say that a lot of people get on YouTube that just want subscribers that do well. There must also be an intention of helping people or of something that you're passionate about. So when it comes to this, what I realized is that I had to let go of the prior version of myself and I had then could wire in me making daily videos, me taking action in that way. But if you don't allow space for it, there's no way that that can actually come in. Now, when I was talking about the numbers of YouTube, that's where I was going with that. So um, when I would assess out the numbers and if I'd want videos to go viral, because I'm trying to control it, I would resist it. It wouldn't actually do well. The times I would actually let go and really let go of outcome are when amazing things would happen. I remember one time I was making a video on star seeds. I was really scared to put that video out because it was so out of the normal videos I was making, but I just let go of caring what people thought. I was passionate about making the video and I just let it go. When I let it go, that video brought in, I think we went from like 500,000 to 700,000 subs within a couple months. And that was a big, that topic started doing really well on my channel. and. It came from letting go of what other people thought and also letting go of the outcome. I was like, whatever happens with this style of videos is what happens. But in every area of my life, when I have let go of the outcome, when I have let go of attachment, and that has been the trigger point to allowing new and more amazing things in. So. Also, it's letting, you know, I let go of that job, allowed something new to come in. It wasn't even I let go of the job, I let go of my reaction to it. I was watching uh, something the other day and it talked about how forgiveness, what it really forgiveness is, is forgiveness is a letting go of meaning. So imagine the thoughts you're thinking that you're given a lot of power. If you forgive someone else, you're letting go of the meaning that somebody else did something bad to you. You let go of that energy pattern. When I forgave my ex stepmom back in 2012, the people in my life that were reflective of the old pattern of my ex stepmom also left. I had a manager that was just like my ex stepmom. Couldn't get her fired for years and all of a sudden she got fired. It's because I forgave my ex stepmom. I realized that she didn't know what she was doing. She was just acting out the patterns of her dad. And because I forgave her, I let go of that meaning. That meaning then left my life. So when we talk about the law of subtraction, it is about letting go of outcome. It is about letting go of attachment. It is about letting go of meaning and forgiving. That's why Ho'oponopono could be such a powerful process. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. Four, four simple words, it's letting go of meaning, it's letting go of the need to be right. So for this process, the more empty you become, the more you will allow in. A lot of times we hold on to things because by holding on to it, we feel secure, we feel safe. The challenge with that though is that we may feel safe, but we may be continuing to create the same things over and over again. If you think the same thoughts every day, feel the same emotions every day, and do the same things every day, you get the same results. That might feel safe, but the key to this is letting go of that old identity, that way of viewing yourself, and then being more present to the moment, doing things for an end of itself. But if you let go of outcome, you are allowing the universe to bring it to you. Imagine the universe could bring something even more amazing to you, but you're limiting it because your ego mind is trying to control every aspect of it. But when you let go and you become empty, it is, it is phenomenal the kind of things that come in. Anytime I've been like trying to control things, feeling a lot of resistance, and then I let go, is big influx just comes in. It is incredible. But the key to this is letting go more than anything else. So what is the law of subtraction? It is realizing that the reason it's hard for you to wire something in is because you haven't actually let go of the old first. You haven't let go of the old self-image, the old story. Maybe you have a story. It says, I, I'm not abundant or I don't deserve this. You gotta let this go to then allow in. It's like going into a closet that is stuffed, packed full and then wanting to receive new clothes but having nowhere to put them. So why would the universe send it to you? But instead, if you start letting go of the clothes and some of those clothes will have meaning to you but you have to realize that maybe the meaning no longer serves you. You can say, well, well this person gave me this shirt even though this shirt is something that reminds you of something very negative or something else and, and then there's trouble letting that go. It's because of the reasons that keep you attached. Letting go is easy. You just have to make the choice to do it. You have to let go of the meaning you've given to it. Maybe your parents hand me, give you hand me down clothes and that's been keeping you in a certain reality. 
biggest causes of suffering are attachment and desire. We attach to emotions. We attach to people. We attach to things. We attach, attach to identity. And we attach to outcome. And when we attach, we create resistance. When we attach, we make something that is not us, us. This episode was really inspired too because I've had from this last, I would say five weeks, three to five weeks, more transformation in my own life than I have ever had in my entire life. And a lot of it has come, most of it's come from just reading one book and practicing one idea. And it's gonna sound so simple that most people will overlook it. But it really is the most powerful insight that I've ever had and changed my life in so many ways. And maybe that's because, I mean, I think if you look at what the Buddha said, the Buddha said, isn't it interesting that it's called the Buddha? Buddha, the Buddha. Like people call Jesus the Jesus. <laughs> that's interesting. Anyway, okay, anyways, that's a side note as well. Um, all suffering, so he said that attachment and desire is the root of all suffering. He said again, attachment and desire is the root of all suffering. So if you look at that scale of consciousness that maybe you've seen me share in like 100 YouTube videos or more, more than that, in that in those, that scale of consciousness, at the bottom you got shame, fear, guilt, anger, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reasoning, love, joy, peace, and enlightenment. And that, that's going up from zero to a thousand. Now, to move up the scale, the key is not to, to, to climb a higher ring and to reach a higher level. The key is letting go. When you let go, you naturally begin to raise up to your natural state. You naturally are love joy, peace, and enlightenment. That's who you really are. Anything less than that is because we've attached to different ideologies, different labels, um, different belief systems, and that's what's kept us in lower vibe. So when we become aware of what those are and we begin to let them go, we begin to feel free. We begin to uh, loosen up that vibe, that attachment. And also, maybe you've heard me recently, I've been on a kick on talking about desire. Desire is something that when we feel desire, and if you look at, the, at, a, at a calibration of 125, is wantingness or desire. And that's actually a pretty low vibration. It goes from zero to 1,000. Fear is the level of 100. 125 is, is desire. And most people think and we're told, desire is great. Desire is great. You got to want it. You got to really want it. Now, the thing is, and the trick with this is that what happens is most people will want something and then it eventually propels them to take action. And then as they take action, then they start getting results. And then people say, well, the wanting was good. The problem is, is many people, they get into wanting and they stay in wanting for a very long time. And they want, and they want, and they want, and they're focused on what they want. They're also saying that what they want, they don't have, which means they lack it. And they're not okay with the present moment, which means they create more resistance. The more we want, the more that we actually, we, we repel in our lives. And what I wanted to do in this video is actually go through, you know, every single day what I do when I go to bed at night, I read for about 20, 30 minutes at least. And I go through and I screenshot different segments of a book that I'm reading. And this last month, I've just been going through and going through and going through the book, Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins. And I have many screenshots from the book. And what I thought I would do is go through some of these screenshots, read some of them to you, and then explain them. And these are like some of the biggest epiphanies that I have had. Now, there's different things that we can let go of. Now, one of the reasons letting go of control is so powerful is because there's, let me try to explain this in a way because there's not, you know, unless you're watching the YouTube video, there is a YouTube channel called Aaron Dowdy Podcast where all the videos of these are, and sometimes there'll be charts that I might share. Um, there'll be you know ways of explaining things that I think give more of a visual reference. However, 
When we look at moving and raising our vibration, which the more we raise our vibration, the more synchronicity we experience, the more love, the more joy, the more peace, the more we enjoy the moment, the more magical life is really. Now what happens is in raising our vibration, there's different levels that we go through. Now at the very bottom levels where we have shame, fear, guilt, anger, at those levels, a lot of times, there is a almost lack of ego in a way. It's almost like a powerlessness. We feel shame, guilt, fear. We're not taking action. We're feeling blocked. Before I got on YouTube and I started making daily videos and I was working that nine to five job selling women's shoes at Barney's New York, which I did uh, for like five years. When I was there, I was just like blocked from taking action. There was almost a loss of my own willpower. This is when a lot of people will also get into personal development because personal development resonates at the level of willingness. Willingness is like willpower, personal development. Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk. Ironically enough, I began reading a book called Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk back in 2017, and it was all about like how to go out there and crush it. And that was one thing that I think triggered in my mind. I read that book, and shortly afterwards, I decided to go daily on YouTube, and that's what really took my channel to a completely new level and just my life into a completely new level. And that changed my self-image more than anything else. I started to see myself as somebody that was a quote-unquote hard worker. And from that, started to, to, it was easier for me to take a lot of action. So when I talk about letting, so, so there was like a lack of ego, then I started to build the ego. And in a way, when you start taking action, willpower, Tony Robbins, stuff like that, you start building that identity around creating hard work or you know creating something in your life and it can be very powerful then what happens is you build up this identity you build up this hard worker you build up the intellectual like who you prefer to be and that's the middle levels of consciousness the middle levels are acceptance reasoning which is the intellect of the mind willingness uh, courage these are all the levels of the ego but then what happens is there's another level that is above that. And those you could call the higher level manifestation principles, which is letting go of control, letting go of having to take really hard action, letting go of expectation, and allowing the universe to manifest through you. A lot of enlightened yogis talk about this. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of books that, that reference this, a lot of ancient teachings that reference this. You literally allowed the divine to flow through you. Now, the problem is that once you go from let, like, so think of it like this. If you have that, that scale, if you're watching the video, then Daniel, the editor will put the scale right here. And at the bottom, you'll have less ego. In the middle, you'll have ego. And at the top, you'll have less ego. It's just that the less ego is a powerlessness at the bottom. Then you have ego in the middle, and then you have less ego at top, but the less ego at top is uh, a channeling of the divine higher self, a channeling of the energy to flow through you. Now, the biggest game changer I've had this in my life, really, is this last month or so, I've been learning to let go and allow the energy to flow through me, to stop trying to control everything, because I'm realizing what I'm doing is I'm bringing, I'm trying to go bring the middle levels into the higher levels and it doesn't make sense. I'm trying to control things in my life and understand this as well. When you control, it's fear. Like imagine you want something to happen, which remember want is a vibration in of itself, and you have an idea about how it should happen and when it should happen and you insist that it happens that way. And what happens is if it doesn't start happening that way, you start to feel fear, you start to lock up, you start to create resistance. The controlling it is saying, I don't trust the universe. I don't trust there's an abundance out there. Therefore, if it doesn't happen the way that I believe it will, then it won't happen. And then I won't be powerful or I won't get the emotion I want or whatever it is. Now, when you release the fear, it is opening yourself up and you release the control. You are opening yourself up to even a better way than your ego may not be able to imagine. So imagine that. Imagine that your ego can only have a certain best case scenario 
And imagine there's many other probabilities. There's many other possibilities that the ego could bring something amazing to your life. But what we do is we close it off and we say, no, 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 no. This isn't, this isn't natural for me to let go and allow. But what I've learned is when I have these things and these emotions come up, here's the letting go technique, by the way, from the book, Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins. You feel the emotion as it comes up. You don't try to control it. You let it be there, whatever it is. You feel it completely. And then you just make the choice to let it go and trust the universe and trust and let go and let the energy carry it. Now, the funny thing is the more you feel it, the more you heal it, the more that it then begins to leave. It's our mind that catches on to the emotion that then recycles it in our energy field over and over and over again. But if we simply let go, we allow it to do its, its work. The biggest causes of suffering are attachment and desire. We attach to emotions. We attach to people. We attach to things. We attach, attach to identity. And we attach to outcome. And when we attach, we create resistance. When we attach, we make something that is not us, us. A person. Ooh, if you were in my life, you, I would be happier. And then we need that person. And then guess what happens? We are deluded into believing that, that person is going to make us happier. Not knowing that we could fill up our own cup. That that person, really what it is, it's an alignment within the inner self. And then that person's a reflection. But we think that person's going to make us happy. And then if that person starts acting any different than the way we expect them to, we start to feel resistance. Here's the funny thing. All reality on the outside is a reflection of the inside. This video right here, highly recommend that you watch it because it'll help you with what you learned in this video. You are going to learn how to let go of the parts of yourself that are seeking approval or validation or are wanting other people to think that you are nice. And you're going to